Hello everyone, so in this video, let us talk about the first three problems from the latest lead code bi-weekly contest 73. So let's start. So the first problem is that the name of the problem is most frequent numbers following key in an array. So the problem statement is little bit not too clear uh, when I first read it problem statement, but uh, it will become easy when you get some examples also, then it will become more clear to you. So let us go with the problem statement. Uh, you are given a zero index integer array nums. You are also given an integer key that is present in nums. So you are given two information as you can see nums and keys. Now it is also given that key is present in nums. Fine. Now for every unique integer target in nums, count the number of times target immediately follows. So immediately follows by an occurrence of key. Okay. So you have to just see that. Uh, so you can just see this example also. So let's say that if you just find out how many occurrence are there such that if nums of i is equal to key, so any ith number is equal to the key value and followed by that. So that nums of i plus one is equal to the target value. So you just have to see that return the target with maximum count. So let just take one example. It will become more clear to you. So let's say that you are given this key as one. Okay. So if you take one as a key, then all the numbers followed by one are the target values. So as you can see that this is, uh, if you can see that this is one and after followed by this I plus one is hundred. Similarly, find out one again and it is followed by 100. So you just have to count out all the numbers, all the target values that is followed by a key. Those all are the target values. And among all those target values, whichever is the maximum occurring target value that is the answer. So as you can see that hundred is occurring here and here. So answer is two, like uh, hundred. Now, similarly for this example, as you can see that, uh, for the key of two, for this as a key of two, this two is again occurring. So for this as a key of two, two is again occurring. So two, two is again occurring. And for this two, three is occurring. So three is occurring as a target only one time and two is occurring as a target three times. So the answer is two. Fine. And that's the overall problem statement. What you can directly do is that let this directly move down to the code part. So what you can directly do is that you can just make a map or you can also store them in some frequency like array, whatever you can do that. And what I'm, what I've done is that I've iterated over from left to right and don't go with the last index because you have to compare I with I plus one. So you just have to take care of only the ith element and you just have to, for every ith element, you will just check ith, I plus one element. So if I plus ith element is equal to key, then increment the count of I plus one element in some map so that you will keep track of how many times for a particular key, a particular target is occurring. And when you have the count of that, just in the end, iterate over the map and find out whatever number is there, which has the maximum occurrence in the map. So that will tell you that whatever number is there, because this frequency or this map number stores that, okay, hundred is occurring one time, two times, 500 times and, and so on. So what you in the end have to find out is what number is that, that is occurring just next to a key and that is occurring the maximum number of times. And that's what you have to take care. That is the overall logic for this problem. Nothing more complicated. So that I don't need to draw it out, but I hope you understand what, whatever the problem statement is with the example. So let's, do, let's move on to the next problem. The next problem is sort the jumbled numbers. So, uh, this is a pretty much straightforward, nothing much complicated problem. You are given a zero index integer array mapping, uh, which represents the mapping rule of shuffled decimal system. So as you can see that mapping of I is equal to J, which means that I should be mapped to J in the new system. Okay. So as you can see, go with the example statement also that zero means that zero is now mapped to it. Okay. One is mapped to nine and so on. So these are the indexes and their mapping. And uh, so you are given are actually a nums array. Okay. So what you actually have to do is that this num array is in the original mapping, like whatever you can see, that is the original number 991338. So you have to first take this number, map it to the new system sort them in the new system and get back what is the original sorting of this num set only. I hope you get the point. So take these numbers, map them to the new coordinate system or like new decimal system. After mapping that, what you just have to do is that sort those new numbers that you have just formed by mapping these numbers to the new decimal system. And after sort like sorting them out, map them back to the original number and like print out those numbers. So uh, let's take the first example. It will become more clear to you. So just take this number 
so uh, just take the first number in this nums 9 and 1 so 9 and 1 so as you can see 9 that is the last index is mapped to 6 so 9 is mapped to 6 so again uh, 9 9 and 9 and 1 is mapped to as you can see 9 so the new number according to this number 9 and 1 so if you just take this example 9 9 1 and because 9 is mapped to 6 this is mapped to 6 and this is mapped to 9 so this is the new number in the new decimal system fine then look at the next number the next number is 338 338 338 now 3 as you can see is mapped to 0 1 2 3 so 0 3 is mapped to 0 so 0 0 and this map to 7 7 Now okay, the last number is thirty-eight. So three is mapped to zero, and this is mapped to seven. So this is actually seven because uh, leading zeros is not required, and this is also seven. So now what you can directly observe is that in the new decimal system we have three numbers that are seven, seven, and nine ninety-one. Now you have to sort them in a in, like in increasing order. So like it can be seven, seven, and seven, nine ninety-one. So this is in the increasing order. And then you have to map back these numbers to the original number. So this number was this, this number was this, this number was this. So this is the first number that is the three thirty eight. So three thirty eight, thirty eight, and ninety uh, one. I hope you get the point. That is the overall logic for this problem. Uh, what you can do is that there is one like uh, you can just make a function that will convert a particular number to its new decimal format. You will get the next no new numbers. Then sort them out, and you can get the answer. There's only one small catch you have to uh, find it out. Uh, that is in the problem statement also. That uh, I don't know that we have elements with the same map. Ha, so see, this is the note value. Elements with the same map value should be appears in the same relative order as in the input. So if the values are same, as you can see here, that is the values are same. If the values are same, that is the seven and seven, then. It should happen that they should appear in the same relative order. So, because in the after sorting, it can happen that you might lost the mappings. So, because if you just make a pair of the original number, so generally what I actually preferred was uh, if I just remove all this part. So, what generally you can do is that you can make a pair of a new decimal number with the old number. Okay, and then you can make a uh, like an array out of it, and then you can like sort it out. When you sort it out, it will be sorted by the new dis like new decimal number, so it will be like in a uh, increasing order. And then you can get all the old decimal because they are in the same uh, pair, and you can just print out the answers. But there's one catch because, it, as you can see in the first example, like in the first example, there are two numbers in the new numbers that are seven. So when this first number is same, when you, and when you are doing sorting. It will now do the sorting according to the second number. Now, second number is whatever is the smallest you will pick that. Be but because there are two numbers, that is thirty and three and three thirty eight, thirty eight and three thirty eight. What is the smallest? Thirty eight is the smallest. So you will be put putting thirty eight first, and then that will become wrong because it is it should be in the relative order of this. Three thirty eight should be first. Now, what is the actual ah uh, like what you can do is, but because what is the actual problem in this code is when we are Sorting according to the new decimal system, that is fine. But when the numbers come, I'm sorting according to the old decimal system. But no, I should be sorting according to the indexes. Whatever the smallest index should come first. I hope you get the point. So it should not be a pair, but it it can be like a tuple in which they should be like a first is the new decimal number, the second it is the index they are found on, and then they are the old decimal system, old old decimal number. So that when so you are first sorting by the new decimal positions, like whatever is the new whatever is the new number. If they are fine, then it is good. Else, if they are not fine, you will be sorting according to the indexes, whichever is the smallest index, which means that the relative order should be remained same. And if that is also not true, then like you will go like because the index will also be like always distant, so it will always be sorted by this what whatever is the reason. And the end, you will get the old decimal according to those sorting conditions, and you can print out the answer. So that's the overall idea for this problem. Let us move on to the actual code. Uh, so what you can directly do is that I have used this convert function to convert the particular string I have or like the number I have to the new decimal position. Uh, so what I'm what I'm doing here is that uh, this is a, a function that is vector. 
of, of vectors so you can make a tuple of whatever you can do that take that this is order and what i've done is that i will be pushing three numbers or like three different numbers in this uh, order vector so what i'm doing here is that first is converting or like a new number so can, using this convert function to get a number back in the new decimal system so you will be sending out the original numbers and the mappings the second is the index at which index you are and the numbs itself the original number after that you can just directly sort it out and after sorting it out uh, you can just print out the answer and the answer is just the last the old decimal numbers uh like and you can just print it out this convert function is just the same you can directly just have the new mapping so uh, you can do whatever uh way you like i just uh first type cast this integer to a string and then just move from left to right and take the every number uh take its mapping and just uh like append 10 to it and then you, can, you just get the answer so there can be multiple ways uh you can do this conversion uh so yeah so like if i just show you how i'm just converting it out so so let's say that the number i have is uh uh, 991 that is the first number 991 so what you can directly do is that uh, you have type card for cast it to string so it is like a string now so you just move from left to right you can first take the first number that is 9 now see what is the 9 is mapped to so 9 is mapped to let's say 6 so put a 6 here and then the total number till now the new number is 6 okay then take the next number so before adding to the next number just multiply the whole new number by 10 so, so that you can just add the new number. So 9, 9 is again mapped to 6. So add 6 to it. So the, the new number till now will become 66. Now again, multiply with 10. It will become 660. What is 1 mapped to? 1 is mapped to 9. So add 9 to it. It becomes 669. And now you get the, uh, like a new map into the original numbers. And yeah, you can do that. So that's the overall logic here. And like you get print out answer. Fine. The last problem is all ancestors of a node in a dieted a cyclic graph. Fine. So uh, the problem statement is very simple and the also like the logic is also very simple uh, because of the constraints are very small. So always do look at the constraints. I focus on that. Uh, highly focus on that. Yeah. So uh, the problem statement goes like this that you are given an integer n representing the number of nodes in the dieted a cyclic graph. That is a tag. Now you can see that you are also given as an input is an edge map. So edge of i is from from to two. Like as you can see that there are different edges going from zero till four, zero till three, one till three and so on. So you are given this map as an input. Now what you are actually find out is written a list of answers where answer of i is the list of ancestors to the i's node sorted in an ascending order. So what you can actually see is that like what all are the ancestor of given node in a sorted order that's all problem now what you can directly see is that for this as a given input now for zero zero doesn't have any sister one one doesn't have any sister two two doesn't have any sister three three has zero and one as an ancestor so as you can see that zero and one is there now uh, four four has zero and two as an ancestor like five now five has zero one and three 0, 1, and 3. So as you can see that 0, then 1, and 3. So yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, you can do that. Now, the simplest way is as you can directly see is that the constraints are very small. Like it is up to 1000. So you can do an O of n square. Now, by n square, I mean that for every node, what you can actually do is that you take just start taking every node like, okay, 0. What for 0, like what all nodes are there for which 0 is the ancestor? So you can do like a like a sort of DFS over the whole tree. Okay, just do a whole traversal over this tree. You have the adjacency list. So just do a whole traversal over this tree and mark out for this zero which nodes you can get from this zero node. Like from starting from this given node, what all nodes you can reach because whatever nodes you can reach are its like are its child. So are its child nodes for that node like all the child nodes the zero will be at its ancestor at any point of time. So yeah, you can take every node as a starting node and just like do a DFS, which is O of N. So it is O of N square. And like, uh, you can just fill out key what all nodes you have traversed. And like, you can just fill out answer and that's over bunch. So that's much. You just have to do a DFS from every node and that is over answer. So I can actually move into the code part now. So what you can actually do is that, uh, you have to first create an essential list over the given, uh, mapping that you have and the answer answer just stored out the, like for every node, what is the ancestor list is here. And uh, this, just first make the instance list, then iterate over from zero to n, which means that for every starting node, you will make a 
wasted vector uh, like what all loads are wasted or not it's just a standard dfs way so uh, just make it false so that uh, you just have to reinstall it every time and uh, just call this solve function so this is the essentialist this is the ith value so ith value means like what all like the current node you on this i is the parent node or like the ancestor for which you have to fill out for all the other nodes this is the answer vector in which you will be like pushing out all the ancestor values and this is the wasted vector cool so the solve function will be taking all of these as an input from the parameters so if the current node you are on is already wasted so that you will not visit it again you will return else you will first mark it as visited so now if the current node you are on is not apparent because you will not be like marking out yourself oh, yeah as your ancestor yeah so what you can actually do is that if it is not your parent uh, you will just push out the current node you are on and the parent or like ancestor you have just push that in that answer vector so that you have the list of all the ancestors and after that whatever node you are on from that node start iterating over all its child node because all those child node will also be like they're having that node as an ancestor so just iterate over all those child nodes and so just do a for loop like this is just a dfs uh, recurrence way to uh, this edges remain the same parent remain the same parent means that the ancestor because we are treating one every current ancestor like taking one just do a bfs so it's just like taking one just do a bfs over the whole tree okay just a, just a standard bfs way and then uh, whatever nodes are inside like throughout the path just mark like just pushing those answers in one then taking us to and just starting a very a fresh dfs traversal and just pushing that to wherever all the nodes which encountered inside the way in uh, apart the current node from which you are starting that's why it is better and just, just that's the overall idea so this is the o of n squared time of time velocity problem so that's the overall solution and code for all the three problems we have discussed thank you for watching this video till the end i will see you next one till i keep coding and bye